Alright, welcome back. Welcome back to Greenbots Gaming, plays Delta Green Possible Landscapes. You are joining us as Dace is experimenting with real life filters on his computer. Why do you have stained glass just sitting there? That's a fantastic question, and thank you for asking. <laughs> Uh, because I was into stained glass. You just been doing time. this until someone asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Please, someone ask me about my stained glass. I'm bringing my fucking just... sock puppets next time. <laughs> just like <laughs> some other hobby. Everyone brings a piece of some weird hobby they had at some point in time. Just, just wait until I start uh, writing my my novel or waving my novel around the camera. What's this guy? Ooh. Ooh, who ask me <laughs> some questions about this. Who wants to talk about I've got this? <laughs> I got this whole jar of oats. Nobody asked me about my oats. <laughs> Damn it, John. How about them oats? How about them nah, oats? there's nothing special about these oats. I actually want to hear about the stained glass stuff, though, if you've got more to say. Is that your, is that, are the oats your temporary camera stand? Mic stand. Yes. Mic stand. I thought that was a jar of pure silver. <laughs> um, Just oats. I think we should go around the horn and guess how many oats are in the jar, and then the and person then John. that gets the closest... Well, and then Jean can count them I have to while count. Damn, the rest of jar. us play. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Calm down with that jar, man. My, I'm joined by my friends. Jean, playing Benedict with his Hello. giant jar of oats. Yes, I'm the oats man. He's joining Welcome. us from uh, from Dubai this time uh, because oats he man. is, uh, I guess, just a, just a man about high the High roller. High roller. Oh, God. Which is uh, why uh, he, he's such a high roller that he's transcended an actual mic stand and is just uh, <laughs> does whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> None of this resonates with uh, me. On to the next one. <laughs> on, on the uh, on the on the graph of like shit that John has used for mic stands, uh, which is higher on the graph, a jar of oats or a, a Lego an entire well, What Lego is store? high? Is it high is the is the weirder or the most unusual? What's the X and Y axis? Yeah, like I, yeah. we got to define this graph. I think um, Y would be weirder, and mm -hmm. X would be f maybe functional. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, this one okay. is low on weird, not too low, but it's quite functional. I, uh, I'd have what to if it's a huge jar of eyeballs? Eyeballs. It's like long. Yeah, it's a weird that's long a big jar. jar. <laughs> yeah. Huh? And we're taking his <laughs> word know, but... for it that that's oats. It's oats and not and eyeballs. eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. I'm joined by Dace playing Benji. Hey -o. I'm joined by Brad playing Hank. Filter. Hello. That filter is just, we just can't even see anything on that one, on that piece of stained glass. Oh, that's a shame. That's a really cool piece of glass. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Oh, that's it looks one like for the audio listeners. Seaweed. <laughs> it, yeah, it just it looks like you're holding up a big it's piece like like seaweed. of weird. Uh, reflective seaweed. Uh, if you, so, okay, so like on that note of like, you know, like doing stained glass and stuff like that, like, do you guys have any, like, like niche like skills or hobbies that you wish you would have given some time to like we all have our individual stuff but what about something that you always would wish that you would have gone back and done man that's a great we question just, let's talk about wow. regrets let's That'll talk about <laughs> regret everyone way to <laughs> there we go the mood. well there's we're in our 30s there's still time guys we could yeah, use yeah. this as a session to say this is what we want to do um yeah for me uh <laughs> And it's still possible. I still have hope. We we're just on the phone with our French friend, me and my girlfriend, and uh, I still want to learn French mm. or get better at it, rather. Yeah. Good choice. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, languages are good. Uh, I learned just enough Russian and German to basically find a U.S. embassy, and that was it. Uh, <laughs> which I was like, when we went, I was like, had trouble with the train system in Paris, so I was gonna, you know, attempt to speak uh, in French in hopes that they would eventually be like, "Oh, he's trying." Here's in one like, of the nope. biggest tourist nope. cities in the in the world. No, nope. <laughs> but it it, it wasn't. No, it was like I came up to like hate a, you more. A, it wasn't just like a random person. I came up to like the the, the people that were working yeah. there. Yeah, but no, <laughs> they're just like Sh shut your mouth, you fucking hillbilly. <laughs> Yeah, basically. You get, you get my language out of your mouth. <laughs> what about what about you, Jean? What's your what's your big like? Well, like I know these two guys. Have you ever done music, Jean, or anything like that? Like you have yeah. those? 
Oh yeah, we jammed yeah. with Sean before. Yeah, mm. he's a really guitarist. good guitarist. Oh, oh, that's very generous. Uh, I wish I did more guitar so that I could actually, you know, live up to that comment. <laughs> well, I mean, is there? But like, I, I don't know, like other languages or like other kind of like you wish you would have, you wish you would have gone bungee jumping more, more than you already have. I yeah. wish I flew in another life. I would have flown aircraft. Oh. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That'd be good. Did a couple of those, but not enough. Well, just I think, a couple. Like, you can, landed. You know, there's tons I landed, of you. and I, I walked away from the landing. Did? That's, that's the a hard part. <laughs> that's, yeah, <laughs> walking away from the fireball. Yeah, <laughs> with my cool guy shades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dace? What's your? Well, if you could, if you could, if you could spend some time to just do a, a hobby of old. Or like a, a skill of a um, Those are two good ones. And I also agree with those. Language and flying. But also dancing. Or uh -oh. better. He's turned into a robot. Mm. He's doing the robot right He's now. doing the robot. <laughs> he's, he he wants to learn to dance. And he's doing the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Any better? It'll buff out. It's Check, yeah, don't check. maybe get there. There we go. We got you. Yes. You're back. Excellent. Okay. That was excellent, by the way. Yeah. Robot. Yeah. Um, I don't think you need to change oh, it. Well, you need another... Uh... <laughs> no regrets. Yeah. Well, it, that's the problem, Brad. That's the only dance move I can do. It's and it's, <laughs> it's a really niche dance move. You can't just whip it out anywhere, you know? Well, if you, if you do, it has to be pretty short. <laughs> amount of robot right? right like you can't nobody you, wants to watch the robot for more than 15 you, seconds you max. can't <laughs> lean into it like, he's seriously get glitching we can't understand him <laughs> oh man i don't know like i i i don't know what i would have done like something you, um like you know i tried to learn to uh i did like a little bit of violin like just for a little bit and i haven't played it for oh, you're ages. not still doing that I haven't been steadily doing it for like I mean I I really haven't played much probably just like a handful of times over the last year you know I still can't barely read music for shit um oh you don't need to do that no well yeah there's <laughs> I feel like I feel like reading there's too much emphasis like all the um me and Dace you know we're in band and educated in music and I think there's way too much emphasis on reading music. Like that is very important if you want to have a group of people come sit down and perform that piece of music right away. Right. But if your like goal is to be collaborative and actually make music with other people, you wouldn't. You never use that skill. Yeah. Like, like being able to Agreed. play by to play by ear or to be um, or even to kind of develop. Like um, like the ability to be spontaneous with it, you think is more right, more, expressive. Know. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you want your to do. You know, if your goal is to be a session violinist, then yeah, that is extremely important to just yeah. sit down and be able to read that music with a group of people. But you know, just depends on what your goal is. Dude, my uh, so my my dad, my dad's never been what was never played an instrument, never did anything. You know, and then he worked for all those years, uh, and then he retired and left Mississippi. Like, the day his retirement was done, he left Mississippi. He was done with the South, moved all the way to Wyoming, like, middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, just this little Bold. tiny town in Wyoming. Um, and just, and then it was funny, and then he, like, almost immediately started playing the banjo. Like, he just picked up a banjo. Oh, wow. wow. And so he became the most <laughs> Southern... Amazing. The most southern southerner <laughs> he could <laughs> just like picking That's and, awesome. picking and grinning and uh, and you know and he doesn't in, in like to that to that end, I mean he doesn't know anything about music. He just plays his own stuff and has made up his own sound songs, and it's pretty damn impressive. Like you know, it's uh, That's awesome. That. You know, he just picked one up and he's like. Should this thing have a back on it? Eh, I don't know. Like, just... Uh, <laughs> it was like an old, like, I mean, that's... janky banjo that was missing parts. <laughs> you know, that's how the old blues players did it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, really. Like, there's one, I forget his name, but he lost... He couldn't use uh, two of his fingers, I think, so he started using a butter knife as a slide, and that became his what? signature sound. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could remember his name. He's a famous bluesman. I'm doing, I'm doing Benji... 
a disservice here. Benji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. if I could go back, if there was any weird instrument I learned to play, it'd be like a hurdy gurdy or something. Just like, <laughs> it has a really cool sound. Or like I want to play with a theremin. I wish I had, mm, yeah. I wish I encounter a theremin uh, in my life. Is that that's the, the, it's like the sit down? No. Like, uh, mm, the yeah, yeah. Sounds like a cat moaning, but more elegant. <laughs> it's, it's like that, but good. Mm. <laughs> right, well, speaking of cats, you guys have recently, uh, in our Game of Impossible Landscapes, uh, wait, 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 come you across can't just a act feline. Like it works. <laughs> No, you did literally come across a feline in the last okay, episode. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, we did, right. we did, we did, we did. <laughs> don't you, don't it's you, sh valid. don't you shit on my. I'll allow it. <laughs> my You're shit adult. To the episode. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't easy, man. <laughs> like I'm doing my best. <laughs> Speaking of dinosaurs, <laughs> uh, last time was <laughs> uh, Last time. Last time, the last two episodes. Um, well, let, let's go back farther than that. Um, the team, having started all the way back in 1995, uh, to investigate the disappearance and the strained occultic nature, possibly, of the disappearance of Abigail Wright. You guys eventually determined that there was this strange force, this strange play at present, the king in yellow, and decided hmm. that the best way to deal with that was to burn that building down uh, after, uh, <laughs> after sending three people off to an uncertain end with Delta Green and shoving the rest of the uh, apartment building into the strange otherworldly uh, like dead zone. No regrets. Uh, the night floors. No, reg no regrets. It's important to live with no regrets. You were then called <laughs> back into service by Dr. Barbus. Now, it turned out, eventually, that Dr. Barbus was not actually working for Delta Green. That he himself was actually an agent of the king in yellow working without really knowing it you guys followed down a bunch Bastard. of leads um got your old handler back in the, in the uh, swing of things made some great new friends in axel um went to vegas and eventually came back last two episodes you guys I found yourself in the Dorchester. In the Dorchester with a conflicting set of memories. One, which you're being told repeatedly, was a delusion. That you guys were Delta Green agents. Uh, a, a conspiracy, an organization intended to protect humanity from the unworldly. Uh, but, again, that, that's a delusion. You guys are actually patients in the Dorchester facility. You guys are, uh, and you've been here for a long time, some of you a little longer than others, uh, but most of you back past 1995 when uh, each of you had mental breaks. Last episode, you uh, guys had kind of come to terms with this. You met Asa Darabondi, of all people, um, mm -hmm. who was taken away to <laughs> have the patsu removed, as one does. Uh, and then you met some other people. You met, uh, you met Leland. Um, Leland, who uh, is someone that you guys have, of course, known for a long time. Uh, he's always been a patient here with you. And uh, you also met uh, Sunshine. Uh, Sunshine, this uh, catatonic, unresponsive kind of figure in a wheelchair. Um, you guys observed uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Maximo Friend, your psychiatrist. You observed him placing these weird red glass container or these glass containers filled with like a red brownish fluid in a kind of pneumatic uh like a pneumatic tube system in the wall of the building after having removed it from asa uh you then saw a kind of a figment a figment of the past future henry lundeen the former owner of the McAllister building, someone that you guys had known of, um, as I think the first time you were introduced to it was the uh, that he was the owner of Abraham the dog that you met back in the night floors. Well, <laughs> if the night floors happened, obviously that didn't happen. You've been at the Dorchester this entire time, um, and you chased him and chased him through a door, and apparently 
And I think it was something that Brad pointed out. And Brad, don't you dare say I didn't give you props for the thing you said, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Uh, and he got juice. He and got he got juice, juice for, for it. Yeah, juice. juice. The Galore. idea of, did we cause Henry Lundeen to run through that door and bump into Abigail Wright? Did we cause that? Was that us? You were then kind mm -hmm. of distracted by this cat who was a part of my flawless and completely smooth uh, transition into the recap. This cat, who you know, belongs to Mr. Wild. Mr. Wild is kind of uh, this scarred and a deformed kind of man who is uh, this enigmatic figure who has, some, unlike everybody else here, has some awareness. Not of just your past lives, but of the fact that you don't belong here. Wants to know what you're really here doing. He told you a little story last time. A story about twin black suns and planets that are descending ever closer and are being threatened with being consumed entirely. And that the only way to escape the gravitational pull, the otherworldly forces that pull you ever deeper toward Carcosa, that you must come close enough to gather velocity and rock it out the other side. And then the last thing that happened is that uh, Ed, Mr. Ed, as you guys call him, the head nurse here, kind of walked out and told you guys, it's time for group. Group therapy time. Oh, Everybody nice. loves a little group therapy, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll say that there's a, you guys have a few minutes here just to talk amongst yourself or to talk to Mr. Wild before you transition into group therapy. What do you, what is going on? And, I did take. And keep in mind too, uh, Mr. Wild did tell you that he wanted to swap something. He wanted to know, he wanted to swap information with you. He has this notebook that he seems to be, uh, I, think it, I think it was uh, Benedict said, I don't think you know things. I think you just have a really smart notebook. Uh, <laughs> Did we make a deal with him yet? He had attempted to make some deal. He wanted information from you. He wanted to know your story. Okay. It did take a lot of willpower in real life for me not to Google Pat Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and tell you right now, I think if you do that, you're only going to find impossible landscape stuff. Don't know for certain, but that was, a, that was a, a, good, a good application of your willpower. But yeah. I don't know, like, do you guys want to take a, take a moment to talk amongst each other? Or to, talk, again, talk to Mr. Wild? Or just go on and, and head to the cotton candy room? Well, i am Take a beat? If I have... I don't mind telling him, I mean... Seems like pretty worthless. I'll tell him a story. I don't mind if you tell him the story either. <laughs> okay. So are you going to... Oh, what are the terms? What's he going to give you for sharing your story? Well, good question. Yeah, what did we want information about? Probably how to get out of here. But if he knew that, maybe he'd be trying to get out too. I don't think he wants to get mm. on, but that's a good question. Oh. Oh. Uh, what's his name? Sorry. It's Mr. Uh, Wild. Mr. Wild. Mm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wild. Uh, remind me again, what kind of information would you, could you possibly have that would be of benefit to someone like the three of us? I have a little bit of everything here in my little book, but I have a, uh, uh, an inclination, uh, call it, call it a gut feeling that your interest lies outside of our, uh, humble walls. And again, gentlemen, the only way out is through, isn't it? 
as he says this, you guys do remember a <coughs> bit of a uh, interaction you had with Sunshine. Not, Sunshine, not yeah. too long ago. Sunshine, the information that Sunshine had been tried to speak in his broken Tartesian and written with a crayon with Benji. That's something that sounded very similar to Get Out. It was the his Tartesian was on. And, you know, and Benji's, you know, his conversational Tartesian isn't that good. And, you know, it's okay. It's like that idea of to get out, how to get out, to get out. And then he wrote down, uh, the only way out is through. Or So, Mr. Wild, how, how, how are we going to organize this so that we both ensure that we we get our part of the deal and you get your part of the deal i can do this for you gentlemen i i will let's walk with me let's go to group and he stands up with some effort you can tell that the right side of his body appears to be a little weaker than the left side and he struggles to his feet especially especially hard because benji's sitting on his knee um let me just uh oh, okay i'll get off alley -oop. <laughs> yeah. i i will be honest with you gentlemen i uh i perhaps am not the uh the exact one who knows the way but i do know the one who does know. Perhaps I could arrange an introduction. And I think we. In exchange, you just want our stories. Is that how this works? <laughs> I, uh, I am. You know, Benjamin Potts. If I if I didn't like your vibe so much, I I might not tell you this, but uh, I like you. <laughs> you, you mean like like? Well, <laughs> what? Well, well, not no. You know, but not yes. Let's. It's early I was on. I'm just saying. I ain't above trading sexual favors if you're going to try to get the car. All right, that went somewhere I was not expecting. That's, uh, <laughs> usually the prosthetic ear is... Anyway, um... <laughs> anyway. I, uh, I think you discount the value of your story and the, the kind of meta-narrative here, if you will, that it fits into. It will become clear in time. Well, then it's I think we need word. a little bit more. We need a little bit more for it. And, uh... You want... We, just, we need a, You want more you, than being given the you only said it, way out of here? You said it, not me. Ours is more valuable than yours. And we need to negotiate properly. All of a sudden, mm. this turns into an episode of Pawn Stars. <laughs> I, I hear you. I have a guy. I, uh, I, I'd love to let this story go for, so, for one measly introduction, but I just I have my I friend here who's an expert on, on meta narrative <laughs> stories. And he says yeah. It's worth significantly more than this. You understand our position. <laughs> so, so then. So, so then I walk into the room and I, with the Impossible Landscapes book in my hand, I said, let me take a look at this. <laughs> my friend Joe Box. Persuade. <laughs> um, Roll a persuade. You know, yeah, give me a persuade. Give me a persuade. Let's, uh... Am I the All one right. doing this? I, I would say I would say that Benedict is the one pushing. Well, Jean, yeah. And do yeah. I get any bonuses? How about, like, hmm. some kind of how about uh, get Benji to give me a charisma roll, see if he can assist you. And if Benji gets a if, if Benji passes his pawn this star roll reference. with his pawn I star love it. reference, <laughs> <laughs> if he can if he can pass the roll, you can have a bonus. You can have a twenty percent bonus for having your friends help you. That's not necessarily how Delta Green works, but it's not not how it works. Tell me what you get there. I definitely had roll of twenty pulled up, and I was oh, logged yeah, you into were, it. You every... were ready to go uh -huh. at the beginning of our episode. Naturally, <laughs> we've only been. Oh my god! I totally forgot. I forgot to mention. I I I touched on it 
in one of our last episodes, our last session. Guys, we are officially one year old. Oh, oh nice. Wah, wah. Oh, oh, <laughs> 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 I was thinking maybe we might sing happy birthday or something, but that just... Uh. <laughs> 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 wait a second, well, are, you wearing, are you wearing an adult diaper? <laughs> wait, 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 I feel like we're just a part of your thing now. <laughs> just for this episode. <laughs> um, I'm not... I'm not delving further into this. I'm just going to give you that charisma roll. Just give me your damn charisma check. At negative 20 after that. <laughs> What'd you get? Uh, success, 32 under 75. All right. Well, and he already said oh. he, he already said he likes Benji, you know? He already said he likes well, Benji. Well, with that plus 20, likes, likes. I tried to persuade and I failed. 84 over 80. Damn. Damn, John. That's so unlucky. <laughs> Damn this charisma-based so character. I'm so bad at this. Uh, uh, charisma-based build. <laughs> he looks you up and down. He's like, I don't know about that. Maybe mm, this might be a conversation better had with... Um, and you guys are like, are, are reaching the door. Uh, you know what happens every time you mention T. You you better chill out, my guy. Um, you should just say the T word. <laughs> say the T word. As you guys, I didn't are, say the B word. As you guys are getting towards the door, and again, it's not it's not like a normal door in a door frame, like in a building. It is like a big metal hatch that you know that locks and locks in place. You get to the door, and it's standing open, and. Uh, Mr. Ed is standing there, arms closed. By the way, Mr. Ed, again, he's a, a massive guy. You guys have seen this picture. On his kind of uh, belt is hanging what looks like a uh, a baseball bat that's been cut down really short into like a kind of truncheon. Um, and you, <laughs> he's a no fucking around kind of guy. Um, and as you guys get there, he says, "This seems like a better conversation to have with, uh, well." With the man in charge. And you guys go into the room. And of course, <laughs> of course, you guys have been here dozens. You guys have been here loads of time. This is the cotton candy room, everybody. It's the group room. You know that. Uh, mm -hmm. All around this in this room, it's just, it's big and square. And there is uh, the walls and the ceilings are painted with this kind of disorientingly like bright pink uh, all around the in a big circle are a set of folding chairs uh, each one of them kind of that weird gray green color like they're kind of dingy and you know and they've been obviously worn a great deal uh, Dr. Friend is already sitting there um, and he's sitting there with his legs crossed and a little notepad in his hand. He says, and as everyone comes in, he says everyone by name. It's Benjamin and Benedict. Thank you for coming. And, um, and, uh, Hank, good, good. Have a seat. Find your seats. And the fluorescent lights in the built in the room are kind of flashing, like flickering. You know, like they're mm -hmm. like the bulbs are kind of getting worn out. And of course, uh, you guys, you guys get in here, and a few other people walk in. Uh, Leland is here. Uh, Mr. Wild himself sits down, kind of slumps in a chair. Um, Leland's here. Uh, someone actually pushes sunshine into. Even Asa shows up. Um, hmm. and it's not long before you see again, like a uh, Rudolph Velader. You know, someone that you guys had seen in the past in 1995. Roland. Also, there's a uh, there's a, a young young woman. Um, it's like a there's a young woman comes in uh well there's like a, a few uh women come in as well um, do we recognize any people. of them no not well actually i say that i say that you don't recognize them one of them you do one of them you actually do but you only recognize them actually quite from something quite recently it was something that i don't know if i ever got back around to um is that miss vores no it's not miss vores actually um, or, or what? Because I think she's the only one we haven't beaten up yet. Where Where did you hear, first hear about Miss Vores? <laughs> I was about to say all these that? women have to be enemies, <laughs> <laughs> or something. 
Where was it you heard about Miss Vores? Um, was that in the in the purse that you found in the mirror, floating? No, it was before no. that. I think oh, it was. Vores. Wasn't it? It was getting back into the hospital or after talking to. We found out about her before we went to uh, Samahina's apartment. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Okay. Possibly. I can't, I can't recall. Um, she's on the board. Yeah. She's on the board. We know that. Uh, no, you actually see a, a different woman. Um, and you recognize her from the ID from the clutch that you recovered from inside the mirror when Benedict had stuck his head through into the vast underwater space. Um, it is Deborah Carver. Um, I'm actually going to drop you a, a picture of her as soon as... Does anyone actually, like... I, I'm on a Windows machine, and I always have that, win, that Windows news thing pop up in the corner uh, without my consent. That's very, very helpful every time. Um... Mm. Yeah, so let me let me drop uh, let me drop Deborah Carver in here. There we go. Yeah. She at the top okay. left. Let's see. Let's drop. Yes, she. Is it the uh, left? Yes. Yeah. What a babe. I'll bring her over to the. Yeah. I'll bring her over to the right hand side. You move her wherever she needs, to, wherever you need her to be. Cool. Yeah, uh, you I see, like her hairdo. She sits there and <laughs> um, she sits down, kind of crosses her arms. Um, she's she's she. You know, if any of you look at her, she gives you like a little smile. You know, that's, uh, of course, you know her. You know, you know, you know Deborah to be um, some kind of addict. You think? Um, yeah, of course, you know you've been here ages, so you, of course you'd know that. Anyway, um, after a while, you know. Uh, there is a point in which most of the orderlies leave because um, there is a a big bunch of them um, who are in here and all but probably Ed and three of them uh, I mean, so there's still several of them in here uh, they kind of find their way to kind of like each corner of the room and just kind of stand there, arms crossed or leaned back and just kind of watching what's happening but kind of like, you know, outside the group and this big steel door just cha -chung, like it's locked into place seemingly from the outside um and mm -hmm. and for a a bit of an like an uncomfortable amount of time it uh it seems kind of quiet in here and then dr friend dr maximo friend starts up and says all right everyone uh, i would like to thank everybody for coming to group uh, i know that's um, this is very important for your care, and uh, I am very, um, I'm very glad, very optimistic for today, uh, for the opportunity to uh, just come together and to heal, to heal our hearts and our minds. Um, isn't is, isn't that right? Uh, you know, and he turns to someone. Isn't that right, uh, uh, Timothy? You know, to Timothy Belater. Timothy's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of course, of course. Do, of course, uh, of course, Doctor, um, Doctor Da, and he, he almost says Doctor Dal. He's like uh, Doctor Friend. Of course, uh, of course, Doctor Friend. That's, um, no, he's like he's very good, very good. Um, so, um, so of course, Timothy, you know, who, who is this, Timothy? Timothy Valader. Um, this is someone who you guys had first run into in the night floors, alongside. Ed Wist when you ran into him. Oh, those t that pair. Yes. So he's okay. So obviously he's kind of in the same situation we are. For how long we don't know. Yeah. He's it would seem. You, like from his tattoos and some of like kind of how he has his like so you think he might be like a he's he's kind of got the feel of a um which is weird because in nineteen ninety five you probably wouldn't have been able to like kind of put your your hand on it necessarily he's got the feel of kind of like a like an iraq vet you know mm -hmm. that kind of kind of kind of feels got like a military feel to him 
Anyway, um, so Dr. Friend, he tells you, he's like, okay, so remember everybody, we are here to listen to each other and to be a part of each other's space, that we are responsible to each other for being open and kind. Um, we will not tolerate any jeering or interruptions. Is that clear? Is everybody okay with this? Yes? Part of our agreement? As always? And he looks... Is that rhetorical? He looks very hard <laughs> at Benedict. Uh, can I can I say something, Doctor? May, may I interrupt? Yeah, yes, Benedict. Let's keep it qu quick. We are. I I just wanted to apologize. I haven't seen you, and I feel like my behavior was not becoming of this place. And um, I, I it's been on my mind, and I wanted to share that. And I wanted everybody to also hear how sorry I am. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. And Benedict, that is very, uh, very but, big of you. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, well yes. good. I'm, glad I'm almost, and, uh, I'm almost and, uh, positive that he took all his medication this morning. Yes. All, all right. That is good. I'm glad we're keeping up with each other's uh, intake of medications. Yes. That's good for support each other. Um. Thank you. He as kind you of, were. He kind of cast a bit of an eye towards Ed. <laughs> who, just, <laughs> who doesn't seem to really move much. He says, all right, well, let us uh, go around. Um, let's go around and let's just, let's, just, let's just talk. I will, of course, you know, this is an opportunity for us to share and just to help each other and have insights. Um, you know, he starts around certain... Are, are you guys all sitting together? I'd, I'd imagine you kind of are. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you guys are kind of going around the circle. And at first he's asked, you know, it's like, you know, you know, how have you been feeling? Have you seen, you know, have you been feeling, you know, better, more depressed or more anxious? You know, he asked these of several people, you know, like, uh, like you know, he might, you know, specifically uh, when he gets to... Um, you know, so when he when he gets to, to Mr. Wild, his questions are just like, with Mr. Wild, you know, are you well today? It's like it's very vague, like, and Mr. Wild's just like, yes, Maximo, just fine. And he gets to like like Dorothy Yale, and he says, you just like, you just like, oh, well, you know how? Or sorry, uh, Deborah Carver. He gets to Deborah Carver and asks, you know, how how are you doing? You know, I said, are you? You know, what is the intensity of, you know, on a scale from 1 to 10, what would you say the intensities of your um, cravings were? You know, and she says, she's like, oh, you know, oh, Dr. Friend, you know, it's a zero, I'd say. Uh, I feel completely cured. Um, your your treatment has been of the utmost quality. You know, he's like, okay, good, good. You know, And it seems like it becomes very clear and you, as it kind of gets around the circle, kind of getting close to you, you kind of feel like that people are kind of going out of their way to tell Dr. Friend what he wants to hear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, who's sitting, who's first in this lineup of you guys as he goes around the circle? Who do you think is first? It's probably Benedict, I'd imagine. You're right, it is Benedict. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> So he gets to you, Benedict, and he says, uh, he says, uh, okay, Benedict, um, do you enjoy, um, activities of your own choosing? I, I, I don't know what you mean. Well, the, the things that you, uh, enjoy doing, that you would, uh, your hobbies, um, such as recreational flying, um, or stained glass making uh do you in, enjoy <laughs> these things well uh, not in here okay. i just haven't had the opportunity as he starts speaking to you and he's asking you questions something odd begins to happen to you benedict and the other two of you you don't experience this this is benedict around kind of the edges of your vision things start to kind of shimmer or shake um and you seem kind of transfixed on dr friend 
as he's mm. sitting across from you, and his his voice kind of begins to echo. Can I do anything to break out of this? Can I, like, shake my head vigorously? Okay. You I think can... he's saying it's just us two. Or no, you said it. No, it's just no, you said it's happening to it's just just, Benedict. Benedict. Oh, just okay, me. Gotcha. Um, at, well, uh, you, at first it, it's just kind of hard to notice, and he he goes on to continue to ask you. He says, uh, "Benedict, do your past failures still worry you? They still concern you? Your regrets from the past?" Uh, <laughs> no, no, I I I have no regrets except for not flying enough course of course there is um there's a bit there where his it becomes kind of hard to understand him it's almost as if his his language is becoming garbled um but then very quickly he kind of snaps his head next to, to hank uh and as soon as he does it's like as it as soon as his gaze falls on hank it's like the world just kind of pops back into focus for you mm. um he he turns on to Hank. Okay, Hank. Um, would you would you describe a time in which you did not feel that the world was real? Not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. He makes some notes. And as he shifts his <laughs> eyes up from his notebook, he tilts his head down and then just his eyes come up. And as they do, Hank, the you see that alongside each, on flanking, the, the patients or the chairs that are next to Dr. Friend, they seem to fade away, and he's flanked by two massive marble columns. And... What? Oh, jeez. His little folding chair shifts. Uh, and you can't explain it. You can't explain how one becomes the other. But it shifts into like a, a large, ornate, beautiful. Well, God, it's a throne. And he's sitting there, and you hear him. And this time, as he speaks again, it, it echoes out, and you feel like you're in a much bigger space. Did you ever believe something or someone was something out to get you, Hank Ellis? Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Maximal, I am not, uh, if it's all right, I'm not feeling uh, up to sharing right now. And he smiles gently. And again, as soon as his eye shift to Benji Potts, you're back here in this awful cotton candy colored room. Benji, he lingers looking at you quietly for an uncomfortable period of time. Benji kind of looks nervously to his right and left, like, all right. He takes a deep breath <clears throat> he, before he kind of winds up. And as soon uh, doctor, as- Doctor, doctor, doctor oh. friend. <laughs> Uh, he, sorry to interrupt. His head snaps <laughs> at Benedict. I mean, like, and it is, and all of the gentleness that was within him is oh. gone. Is I... Benedict, we talked about interruptions. And again, Benedict, Just, it... now you're, now, but now Dr. Friend is high above you on this huge plinth sitting he is covered in royal robes that drape over his body, down over the arms of the chair. And beside his throne is an even larger throne, a superhuman-sized throne. It's almost comically large. And he sits next to it with a golden scepter in his hand where his pen is in, quote-unquote, real life. And he regards you with a, an amount of authority, of power, that chills you to your very bone. If you'd like to continue speaking, please roll me a power roll. Wow, interesting. Jeez. I was going to say there's... I was predicting a sanity check, this but a power roll. Hardcore. Way to change it up, Ox. And he succeeds. Benedict succeeds. What would you like to say wow. to, the, to this... 
And again, it's still Dr. Friend, but he is... Is he wearing a fucking crown? I'm like, what is oh, that? God. Is it... Is it like his crown and like the columns and everything? Is there like a Roman flavor to them? Not Roman. It seems like, like European... Um, God, like European... Like imagine like a cathedral, almost. Like European mm. royalty uh, in that way. Okay. Mm. What do you say, Benedict? You're staring up and you're looking up. And you're and by the way, you're also not sitting in a chair. You're now on your knees. Uh, uh, uh he's he's stuttering a little bit the force of the whatever is happening to him. He initially was just gonna ask to go to the bathroom to try and um I don't know, <laughs> save Benji from some impending oh, mind altering oh, shenanigans. <laughs> But now with this, I think he rapidly changes his mind and he thinks back to Acer's reaction to something he said. And I think he's he's going to try make the situation go nuclear. And he's going to say, uh, Mac, Dr. Friend, I'm, I wanted... There was just a question I had before uh, I asked Acer where his bottle is and I just wanted to find out what where is everybody's bottle at present the other two of you watching this happen again you'd see nothing odd um except that benedict begins to babble incoherently that not completely oh. incoherently to those who can speak tartesian so from our perspective oh, wow. he's Still, like, in what? his seat. He's not on his knees. He's still on his seat talking to Dr. Friend. Huh. Andy, but you hear like him... Speaking... You hear him ask. You hear him talk. Uh, Benji, you didn't know. You didn't know Benedict knew Tartesian? Crazy. What's he saying? He's asking about the bottle. As he does, does everybody else understand? No, Hank does not. To Hank, it seems gobbledygook. There is, but a sitting across from, you know, Hank and Benji, you look around the room, and most most people are just kind of like looking at the floor and seem to just kind of live kind of in their own world. Um, but both Deborah, um, both Deborah Carver and Mister Wild are looking at Benedict with some intensity. Uh. So I think Hank at this point would be concerned and kind of like pat him on the back and say, uh, you okay, Benedict? As you do this, Benedict, you find yourself suddenly sitting back in your chair. Mm. Oh, God. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, my question remains... Max, <laughs> Doctor Doctor Franks, <laughs> Doctor Friend. Uh, I and he he looks at Doctor Friend with some kind of horrified awe. You're like staring at the edge of an abyss, the fear and apprehension at the same time. Hmm. You, yes, you do look at him, and again, as you look at him, then Mister Wild and Deborah Carver's heads also turn to him, like. What's he going to say? You know, like they seem very, and even maybe even Mr. Wild kind of, he was slouching back. He kind of leans forward on his good arm, kind of putting it on his knees, like eager for the answer. And, and any reaction from Acer? Acer doesn't seem to have understood the question. Mm. But Wild did. But Wild and, um, did. And also, and that's, what's her name? That's, yeah. <laughs> Damn. That's surprising that of all the shit Ace has been in, he doesn't know Tartesian. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's just a pawn. Yeah, I thought he was the kind of the big bad. But okay. hmm. They lean forward. We're looking at the big bad. Well, they, they, they both be. lean forward. And there is a... The doctor friend purses his lips this kind of 
image of him being big and powerful and intimidating, it kind of melts away. And he seems meek. He seems embarrassed. He he kind of fiddles with his pen, which just a moment ago was a grand scepter. And he um, he looks back up to you, Benedict says, "It's Benedict. I, you know, I I am a professional, but I I do not have all of the answers. And we are all looking for something, and uh, it would be disingenuous for me to tell you that I knew the answers to such, um, uh, shall we say, life-altering things. Um, I if I knew, I." I would tell you, I do not know about these things. Not that I do not want to know. I am on my own journey, in a way. But I think mm. we have disrupted group enough for today. Isn't that right? Uh, und understood. Uh, thank you for sharing. I, I, I appreciate that. Very good. Very good. Now... Benjamin. So weird. Oh, hell. I thought we were done. <laughs> oh, no. I thought we were done been dismissed. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought I said... It was, it was all for naught, Benedict. It was all for naught. Uh, <laughs> no, not really, because that... So that leads me to believe that That's this bottle revealing. situation is, like, bigger than mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things going on for whatever reason. Yeah. Benjamin. Benjamin Potts, are yep. you there? Yep, yep, uh huh. Yes, yep. you there. Benjamin, I have a. Uh, after we talked last time, you know, I am I am interested to hear what you have heard um, in recent about your musics. Um, I know that you've been working on a song. Um, when did you first encounter the play? The King in Yellow. Uh, this was about 20 years ago. And as you kind of just throw that line away, I imagine Benny's just like, yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> like, and you find yourself going on and on about the circumstances of finding the play. And as you, there's a moment where Benji looks down kind of briefly at his hands and then back up. And again, he sees this... You got, you're in what looks like a huge palatial space with this smaller throne holding Dr. Maximo Wren. And he is adorned in brilliant, luxurious opulence. Uh, there even seems to be a bit of a an aura about him, like almost as if he exudes light in and of himself. And you are down on this plush carpet that leads up to the thrones and it's a set of several thrones but there's the one in the middle and even as you and at you trying to talk to dr maximo friend but your eyes are constantly simultaneously pulled and repelled by the giant throne in the middle and is you, there anything in the giant throne it is not the throne is empty and you realize that dr friend he he is quizzing you, basically. What what did and what did the what did the Phantom say to Casilda? What when and the masquerade? When when do they unmask? He's quizzing you on the king in yellow. But his words are in Tartesian, and your words are in Tartesian as well. You no longer have a conversational grasp of the language it seems to flow naturally from you and part of you is kind of standing on the outside acknowledging the strangeness as the other part of you just accepts it just like the part of you has accepted being at the dorchester facility for 25 years this continues mm. for quite some time and he but then he stops and he says benjamin have you seen the yellow sign 
and he he swings his scepter up to this grand banner that hangs down over the thrones that has the yellow sign emblazoned upon it. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar. Have you heard that the last king has come? Who's the last king? That question... I don't, like, there's something it does to Dr. Friend. It's like, like he was expecting something. Like, you were felt like you were on a roll with him. And then here you are, right back in the cotton candy room. And he frowns. Oh. Oh, Benjamin. Well, maybe next time. Next time, right? What? And he just kind of shakes his head like he's disappointed and just scribbles in his notebook. He says, all right, everyone. I think that was pretty good for today. Does everyone feel good about what we've talked about, about the progress we've made? No. You told me you're going to tell me more about that lake. Uh, Benji, I, it is it is you from whence I am curious about the lake. You don't know nothing about it. I, I, uh, give me a human. Give me a human roll. Let's see. What are the other participants of, like, Hank and Benedict's experience? Is it the same kind of babbling as that hallucination or something is going through? Yes, but it doesn't, it, like, in a way, it doesn't seem odd. Like, it's not enough mm. to. Like, it seems like this is part and parcel. This seems normal. Okay. It's a failure. It's fucking... Don't you hate a failure on a role-playing conversational? <laughs> like, now make there's sure. just shit that <laughs> I don't sure. know. Make sure y'all check the things. Yeah, make sure you yeah. check your failures. Oh, yeah, good call. Uh, trust me, I'm going to get to 100 Persuade before this game <laughs> is done or I die. And I'm still going to fail. <laughs> he says to you, he's like, he's like, Benjamin, we are on a journey and I am just I am just curious. I just want to help you. I am here to um, unpack your traumas. And uh, this is just That's, a, a uh, manner in which we do that kind of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hank? Hank, is there, right, you, Hank. is there something you would like to say? You're like, wax him on the back. <laughs> oh, you That's all. That. That's all. We got That's an all, emergency. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, we we do appreciate these sessions. Now, uh, <clears throat> if it's all right, uh, will we have a chance to roam the grounds? Maybe have some outside time or something of the of the sort. Oh, I do not think it is safe to go outside. It's, I, you know, there was there was a time. It was before you were here, Hank. I, I know it's been a while, but there was a time where we did have access to the grounds. But it's not dangerous. It's dangerous outside uh, nowadays. Um, but, uh, but what? I, I, I do think that that uh, I do think that that uh, concludes our group time, um, and uh, you know, and so I think that there is some unstructured time here for you, everyone, to uh, let's just let's just let's all go back to our rooms or go down to the to the library or or go you know go to the cafeteria, have a snack, and really think about what we've talked about today and he gives all three of you a hard look i mean that sounds fine to me that sounds fine <laughs> it sounds me. great let's, let's get out of here anything let's to get, get out, out of this here. fucking room <laughs> benji reaches for a set of desert eagles that aren't there that are not there <laughs> <laughs> um the orderlies go over and unlock the door and everyone kind of files out um as you guys go, you are um, drafted, let's say, by Deborah Carver. Oh, I wanted to talk to her anyway. And she kind of has both her hands in her pockets and kind of has her head down, but kind of looks up at you like, I'm following you. Like, we're wherever we're going, wherever you're going, I'm going too. You think she wants to talk to you? Oh. Um, maybe we... Head down to the library? Is that, like, pretty isolated? There is a... Yes. Well, and of course you know how to get there. Of course, you've been here so long. You know where everything is. Uh, 
Yeah, you know that the library is that you probably need to you probably need to go down past the men's wing, um, you know, and that there is a a door there that goes upstairs to a small kind of reading nook. It's called a library, is probably probably doing it too much. And yes. Okay. So maybe we sit down at the nook. Is Deborah still with us? Yeah. As you guys head that way, there's, you know, it's interesting. You know, part of you definitely thinks, oh, well, I, this door wasn't here. The stairwell wasn't here before. But ah, it's okay. It's always like this. You know, the stairwells are sometimes in weird places. Uh, and you guys make your way up again to this small kind of nook. Um, and there's, and most of the books are like almost like picture books and stuff like that. It feels very. It's it's not very stimulating, um, and as you get there, you uh, yeah Deborah Carver she follows you in. She's like ah, oh, oh. so uh, what the hell was that back there, huh? And Benji says in Tartesian, "How do you know the old tongue?" <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> She says, she tells you uh, in English again. She kind of regards you. She's like, she's like, I've been speaking that way longer than you. And that's just been a long time. I, I had no idea that you were... Benji's eyes widen and then he looks to Benedict and Hank. Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. That's the go-to. She says, and she's like, yeah. Um, you know, Benji, I had no idea. You've been here all this time and not once have you spoken spoken like that well that's the thing I'm not sure I have been here all this time how did you wind up here oh I I've come to the come to the you know I basically I, I had to come to the sanatorium you know just for some rest uh, little uh little little drug problem you know you, tell you didn't answer my first Deborah, question <clears throat> How do you know how to speak Tartesian? Well, I've, I I learned to speak Tartesian before I spoke English. Where are you from? Well, from Carcosa. Holy shit! Uh, well, and she, and she and I like if you guys have a reaction, she kind of looks around. She's like, "Are you guys fucking with me?" Or maybe she doesn't say fucking with me. She's like, are you guys messing with me? So oh. you don't... Uh, this might sound crazy, Deborah, but you don't have these, like, uh, sensations or uh, memories of, like, a, a past life. Like, maybe you haven't been here this entire time? No. No. She... It, that seems to make her uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> did you... Did you leave your ID card... In maybe a black void, perhaps. Black void, but black. Jesus, Benedict, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. About. I th I thought I saw some stuff in that room. Did anybody else see some weird? I I don't know. Maybe I need a rest. Deborah, did you see some weird things in that room while we were talking to Doctor Friend? Not besides, uh, not besides you guys. <laughs> Speaking Tartesian, I just I just didn't know. You know, it's just nice to hear. It's nice to to speak in your own language sometimes. You know, but you were hesitant to talk to him. What? Why? Well, he's a. You must. Well, you know, you must I... see those things. Well, uh, give me, give me some type of thing. Give me some type of role, some type of persuade, or some type of human thing. Let's. Damn it, Benedict, are you gonna? Are you gonna get it done or not? Human, I'ma get this done. Human success, 58 nice. under 70. She's hiding something, and you get the sense that she might also be hiding something from Dr. Friend. Um, she what seems are you hiding, Deborah? A little sketchy. She's like, well, <laughs> I just didn't want him to, you know, I'm supposed to be here to, to get sober, and, you know, I just don't want, you know, and Dr. Friend, you know, as much of a weirdo as he is sometimes, you know, uh, he can kind of tell when I've been using, and I, you know, I just didn't want to, uh, uh... What are you on? Are you on the Beatles? 
And she kind of like smiles. You on the ground she, up. Kinda, she kind of smiles and looks around. She's, ground like, up. she's like, well, well, yeah. Benedict. I no, really? I had no idea. <laughs> nice. Have well, you had who any... should connect? You see, yeah, you're still using the Beatles in this oh. facility? I just find them myself. Are you are you guys are you guys in the in the market? What what's going what's going on? That's uh Um <laughs> Well it's been so yeah. long uh, since <laughs> we've had some uh, <laughs> Obviously, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm in the market. Do you have any beetles? <laughs> I would like some beetles. Uh, she's like, she's going, okay, okay, I, I can, uh, I mean, I'm hip. You know, I could maybe, uh, I can maybe get you, you know, I can get you some, I can get you some bugs, you know, uh, if, if, if that's, that's what you're into. Yep, let's do it. Let's make a whole night of it. We can get a cup of coffee and speak Tartesian to each other, and then and then <laughs> do some Beatles. All right. Well, I mean, I... it's been so it's been so long since we've uh, dabbled in the Beatles. Could you remind? What is it like these days? I mean, what kind of sensations is it? What's going on with them? <laughs> so back in our day, you could you could eat a whole beetle and just feel pleasant. <laughs> But now with all these lab-grown beetles, <laughs> you take one munch and you just lose your damn mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, on, only, only the class. Well, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of partial. To, and again, she kind of looks. <laughs> she kind of looks around. She's like, well, I mean, you know, you know, Mal you know, Melonia is is my go-to. But I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do some bugs. You know, you know, when I get the chance. Like to, just, like to just eat the bugs, you know. That's I think that's the best way. You know, some people snort it, but eh, they're still bugs, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Does Melonia mean anything to us? No, not specifically. You've never heard the word before. The way she said it, it sounds like it's a derivative of the Beatles, possibly. Okay. Or whatever the the effect of the beetle is. Hmm. Uh. I I do. Why does? Well, I mean. Go ahead. I am. I, I. Why does Doctor Friend not? Why Why is this stuff bad for you? Oh, you know, it just gets hard to do without it sometimes, and then when you don't have it, it's difficult. Hmm. But I can I'd I consider myself kill for a to, cup of tea. I uh well I mean do you uh do you want to uh probably make you some Melonia tea a little lighter, you know a little lighter you know than uh than injecting it if you want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just an emphatic yes from Vinji. <laughs> like well I could I could uh listen guys I how about. You know, this first one's on me. How about that? How about that? <laughs> yeah, that always Joe turns really out great. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah. Uh, I couldn't help but uh, I, I, saw, I am all for this uh, Beatles session, Melonia tea situation. It sounds like good, uh, good fun. But I didn't did notice uh back at that session the group session that uh, uh what do you know about mr wild he seemed to also somewhat understood uh benji's cartesian rant oh i don't know about him he's uh he's a bit of an odd guy uh maybe he uh knows a little bit of of tartesian too i i didn't know he did um but him and you know him and you know him and King. You know they're just like they're they're thick as thieves. I think I'm pretty sure King speaks it. That's King. I don't think we've met King. What do you mean you haven't met King? Bale. Is that the cat? <laughs> King Bale. King Bale. The kitty. A patient here. Uh. Yeah. Of course. King Bale. And 
or it'd be Bile. King Bile. B A E L. Go, let's head over to Demon Web. Let's head over to Demon Web 101. Uh, <laughs> Benjamin Potts, what do we have under bail? Let's <laughs> 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 see. It's definitely some Skyrim. Uh, door number bail. <laughs> let's see what we have. Oh, behind. man. Let's have, have uh, uh, bile for 1,000. Demon Web is. Demon Web's down right now. Oh, I've got it pulled up. Uh, Under Bile, and this, and again, this is something Benji just pulls out of his big old occultic filled head. The first principal ass. spirit is a king ruling in the east called Bile. He maketh thee go invisible. He ruleth over 66 legions of infernal spirits. He appeareth in diverse shapes, sometimes like a cat, sometimes like a toad, and sometimes like a man. Sometimes all of these forms at once. He speaks hoarsely. This character, this is his character, which is used, that which used to be worn as a layman before him who call him forth, or else he will do thee no homage. A cat, you say. And you guys know that Bael is considered, and Benji would tell you this, Bael is kind of the king of all demons that demon all of the other demons kind of serve by al oh, really? well shit this is wow. the guy that uh wild was gonna hook us up with let's just bypass the middleman and go straight to bile yeah how uh, about we could you end up <clears throat> we well we of course have talked spoken to bile before but could do you know where he is at the moment or could we get an introduction to him with him well, yeah, I mean, he's on the other side of the library, just like always. That's convenient. We're Sweet. right here. <laughs> <laughs> Is she going to last? Well, yeah, but you have to get to the other side. Wait, what do you mean uh, the other side um, of the library? Uh, I mean, what, what do you mean? Are you guys aren't feeling well today. I, I could see that. That's, that's something up with you. Yeah, we're high as hell, sister. Uh, <laughs> you're just exploring that space, you know? Hey, would you mind showing us how to get to the other side of the library? Keep this party going. <laughs> she's like, she's like, all right, but I'm, I'm not going myself. I don't have the energy for that shit today. But could uh, you show us how? Yeah, of course. Yes. So again, like this is not, this is more of a nook than it is anything else. And there is this... There's this window, and this window is a little larger than the others. Um, but again, still kind of fogged, maybe probably raining outside. Um, and she go. there is a, a, um, a shelf that is about as high. You know, it's probably about six feet high, about as tall as a person is. And she pulls, she starts pulling off books. She doesn't pull off books and set them aside nicely. She begins to dig out books. But every time she pulls out a book, there's just another book behind it. And then there's another book behind that one. And she's pulling them out and throwing them to the floor. Um, and at one point in time, she just kind of stops. She's like, are you going to fucking help? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Sure. Then she'll start digging out books. You guys start digging out books. And it seems to go on and on and on until you start digging it's almost like you're digging a like a like a burrow or a tunnel through books that are all and as you kind of get deeper the books are no longer perfectly stacked they're haphazardly piled on each other as you guys and in a very like alice in wonderland kind of style deborah just begins to crawl through um and you know she probably gets probably about 10 feet in before she kind of pushes through and you see just on the other side a kind of flickering light that looks like it might be the light of a fire. Uh, she crawls through the other side, and uh, is anyone going to go after her? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, all of us. Yeah, without, without question. This drug what, dealer uh, has to be good. Perception <laughs> check for traps. <laughs> There are no traps. Uh, you guys... Oh, of course there are traps. That's silly. But not that kind. Anyway, you guys... Um, 
Uh, I imagine Benji dives in first, and Benji, you come out the other side, and you're literally coming out of the side of a giant pile of books. And there is a... A campfire? Question mark? Of what looks like a pile of... Books, broken down furniture that's been pulled apart in this kind of alcove of books and bookshelves that are piled haphazardly all around you. And as all three of you come into this zone, come into this space, I imagine maybe Benedict is the last one to come out. That you, As you guys are kind of helping Benedict to his feet. And Deborah's standing here and she's like, and she just kind of nonchalantly like, the library guys the library and you guys look up up probably a hundred feet into this massive massive room with bookshelves rising almost to the ceiling some of them like standing haphazardly like they might topple over at any moment they're so tall and so massive like uh, God, that movie Wally, where he piles up the garbage into the shape of skyscrapers, it's like that. Mm. Does this and, uh, remind us of a, another library we were in? Mm -hmm. Of a bookshop, perhaps? It doesn't yeah, not no. remind you of that, that's for sure. And as you guys are looking <laughs> up and you see these rails, these kind of slots in the ceiling, and you hear this like this kind of whipping like winding sound as you see a um, an unclothed wooden mannequin suspended on strings bound past the opening of your alcove you're in turning its wooden head so briefly to regard you and then zipping and bounding off into the distance on its marionette strings and that is probably a good place to stop does Deborah react to that Please. in any way before we stop? No, nah, she's like, she's like, okay, well, uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side, and she crawls back through. <laughs> okay, <the tunnel. laughs> cool. Hey, what, what about that cup of coffee sometime? Oh, I'll, I'll find you. <laughs> and she just, and the, I'll the find drugs. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find you. <laughs> and she just crawls through. Jeez. Wow. She's fucking Objection gone. stings. <laughs> All right. What a trip. What a fucking trip. What a fucking trip. Back in the night, floors, crazy. boys. Yeah. Well, we don't like know that. where we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll get an opportunity to uh, to talk about it. Maybe we, uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to do the sanity check, but we're going to give it a go. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, everyone listening, everyone watching, thank you as well. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Come join us uh, on all social medias. They're all linked, uh, especially our Reddit. That's kind of our, our central hub. Um, if you really like what you're hearing, you want to hear it a week early, you want to just support us. Uh, you know, it's only three bucks a month uh, for our Patreon at patreon.com slash greenboxgaming underscore, also linked wherever this is. Um, we'd really appreciate it. And our patrons really help support us, help us to with our hosting fees and stuff. It's really awesome, you guys. Uh, anyway. That's some exclusive stuff, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. There. We have our right. exclusive Recently. stuff. We have our, our backup character creations. Um, mm -hmm. I am, I'm going to make a, a projection here. I'm, oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make uh -oh. a projection. <laughs> if we get to the end of this season, this chapter of this book, and we have not killed one of you guys, I'm going to be impressed. I'm going to be <laughs> really surprised. <laughs> So, uh, or have gone insane, <laughs> or gone well, gone insane is also losing a character, so uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, but we'll see. But yeah, so we have the backup character creations on there, we also have the Sandy check, you know, we just get to kind of talk about what we've uh, we'll, we'll back behind the scenes action, but uh, yeah, wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, we really appreciate you uh, joining us, um, and uh, yeah, we will catch you next time, guys. Once again, thank you very much for being here for doing this with me today. It was like absolutely. Thank you. A pleasure. A pleasure. But uh yeah, but everyone, thank you for joining us and remember stay safe and stay safe. Bye. Wait. <laughs> <laughs>